On the November 13th edition of WINA's Best Seat in the House, Jed Williams talked with Jeff White of the Richmond Times-Dispatch. Jeff gave his thoughts on Virginia's 93-90 win over Arizona to open the John Paul Jones Arena. The best seat in the house takes you to 7 o'clock, presented by Churchill Homes, building homes for your lifestyle with thoughtful design and attention to detail. Churchill Homes, quality, integrity, teamwork. With that, we go right to the Casales Hotline Monday night. Time for a little Monday evening quarterback. I don't know, maybe it's a Monday evening point guard. we got to find some basketball terminology for this segment. Jeff White, Richmond Times-Dispatch with us. Get you just bailed on football like uh, most of the fan base seems to have done. I don't know. We're going to try to stick with it this week, Jeff. Is is that the vibe you're getting from the I, well, fan base, you know, that they're I gone after last it's night? It's a combination of the off week and the opening of the arena and the big win and the fact that it allows people to kind of put the the football problems out of their mind for a while. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, for the moment at least, people are embracing basketball. But it's kind of slow in basketball till the end of the month, till the game at Purdue. I sure. mean, there's a couple uh you know, kind of gimme games that I don't think people are going to be quite as excited about. Yeah. Morgan State and UNC Asheville and Maryland, Maryland Eastern, Eastern Shore, Shore sure. as they were last night. But uh, Are you intrigued to see those environments, though? Because, I mean, last night was dream yeah, come I, true. I am. I mean, that is a big building, and which, yeah. you know, it's stating the obvious. But, uh, you know, historically, Virginia fans have, you know, been very fair weather. And, they you know, now that the team looks like it'll be good, you know, they may hop, hop on. But, you know, it's just... You know, you don't know a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yeah. You know, Morgan State, you know, let, let's say they get, uh, you know, 10,000 people, which would have filled U-Haul and then some. You know, you're still going to have 5,000 empty right. seats Right, two-thirds there. there. Right. And, you know, and, and, you know, it's not like they're going to herd everyone down to the lower level to pack that. So you may just have these, you know, pockets of empty seats. So sure. it's interesting. I mean, I still feel, and I, I know they had good reasons for building it as big as they did. I still think it's bigger than they need. Just with the reality of college basketball today, what would be a fair range? Maybe twelve yeah, to thirteen I think 12, instead. I think twelve okay. would have been good. I know the, uh, you know, the coaching staff, uh, Pete Gillen and Tommy Herring was there, you know, at the time, and, and they were kind of pushing for twelve, and they understood why President Castine wanted it larger. But you know, from there, you know, twelve, you just make it a little tighter. You know, you have a it's easier to sell out the games that aren't as attractive as last night's. Yeah. Uh, It'll be interesting to see. I think the whole thing will be, I think, you know, fans will support the team when it's doing well. But, right. uh, you know, what will be interesting is if the program hits hard times at some point because historically Virginia fans haven't, you know, been, you know, thick or thin type sure. fans. In terms of the game itself, Virginia goes to the locker room down 13, comes out, plays a marvelous second half, and it could have been worse than 13. They were down as many yeah, as 19. Yeah, that, that was huge. I thought. Last four minutes of the first half, how important was it? I know you asked the question, and Dave Leto said it, it may have sounded silly at the time, but making it a manageable situation. Yeah, I mean, it was important to get it to 13. It was also important to cut it down initially in the second half, which yeah. they did, you know, kind of come out hot because, uh, you know, 13 can quickly be 16 or 18, you know, and they didn't allow that to happen. There were a couple times during the comeback where I thought, you know, it might have gotten away from them. There was the one swing where Singletary had a kind of contested layup on a fast break, and he missed, and McClellan hit a three at the other end. So you had the five-point swing there. Um, but after a while, it seemed kind of like, you know, they were going to come and they weren't going to be denied. I mean, it just seemed like, yeah. you know, they had a little more juice. It, it was a little bit like that at the last game at U-Haul against Maryland. Right, but, sure. uh you know, and I'm still kind of surprised that Maryland came back to win that game because normally when the home team comes back like that and the crowd is in it, you know, the home team's going to win that. But uh, yeah, it was pretty well scripted last night, it seemed to be. Jeff White, Richmond Times-Dispatch, Monday evening quarterback or point guard or whatever with us on the Casales Hotline on the best seat in the house. Gadfly, in terms of Dave Leto's influence on this team, I mean, you know, they didn't have a miserable, miserable first half, but I know they didn't do a lot of the things that he likes. And they come out in the second half, they got rebound Arizona, they played much better defense, they went to the zone at times, uh, and then offensively they attacked the goal. Is that a testament to him and the influence that he can have on them that in 15 minutes in the locker room he can transform their game and their mentality so dramatically? Yeah, you know, I think so. I, you know, I think also Arizona – missed some shots you know they cooperated some i mean it was good sure. defense in the second half virginia played better but uh 
you know, Arizona did some things that it had not done in the first half. I mean, I thought they, I think they are immensely talented yes. and, and very difficult to match up against because, you know, they're kind of athletic, fluid guys who, who are bouncy but can also go outside. And, uh, you know, there aren't a lot of those kind of guys on Virginia. It was a tough matchup, and, and those guys can shoot. They're not bashful about shooting. And, you know, I think they had five different guys hit, hit at least one three pointer. And, Marcus Williams was not one of them. He took a couple, and he's certainly capable of doing it. So they very easily could have had six guys with three pointers. So, but uh, I tell you, these guys buy into Dave Lato just totally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Sean Singletary, his devotion to his coach is is you know unparalleled. I think you know at least in Virginia. I mean, maybe you see it in you know lacrosse and then at some other sports. But I mean, he absolutely believes. You know, if Dave Leto told him to go, you know, run into the wall full speed, right? As smart a guy as Singletary is, he'd figure his coach knew what he was talking about. Well, so, and how about a guy they like believe, they believe in him, and, yeah. and you know, and I think they realized that you know he 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 strikes that balance, which is hard to do of being just very tough on the right. on the court, but being approachable off the court. And, and you know, as much as it can be a cliche, I do feel that those players feel they can walk into his office. And talk, and uh, you know, but that doesn't mean he's not going to turn around and scream at him the next day. Well, and a good example might be Mamadi Diani, where he has pushed that kid to the brink over the last, I don't know, two or three weeks or two or three months. Yet at the same time, I guess has supported him just enough to give him the confidence to keep moving forward. And in the end, you get a game like last yeah, night. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, I don't, I haven't seen the practices. You know, it strikes me maybe he's the new whipping boy. I think Jason Kane was that guy last year, and we saw it during games. Uh, you know, Kane just took a lot, a lot of criticism from Leto, and uh, but it's paying off. And you know, he's he's become, you know, a very good player. You know, step by step over his career, it's, it's kind of been remarkable to watch when you realize where he started and where he is now, right now, and where he has a chance to be. And you know, I think Jason Kane will play for pay. Yeah, you know, in some league at some level for an awful long time because he, he you know, he's very athletic. He's got good instincts, uh, good rebounder, and just getting better all the time. Uh, quick final thought here, Jeff. The uh, the new guys, especially Harris, Tat, and Petnella, a lot of athleticism, a lot of ruggedness. It seems like they'll add a lot of aggressiveness and toughness to the operation, even if they don't put up glittery numbers. Yeah, you know, I thought they were. You know, I thought they kind of had the first game jitters. But, yeah. I mean, that is just a high level to break in against, you know, a guy like Jameel Tucker. But, you know, the fact that Solomon Tatt was on the court at the end of the game and, and later was actually doing the offense, offensive-defensive switch with him and Adrian Joseph shows the level of confidence he has in him. And, you know, Will Harris didn't show a lot, but, I mean, that's also a guy who had surgery on his right foot, you know, on October 27th, which right. is what, two, you know, two so weeks he's, he's ago. he's ahead of schedule, James. right, yeah. Uh, and, then, you know, Pat Nello was aggressive. And, I, you know, I think he's going to be – a more athletic, you know, better Nick Vanderlyn. I mean, I don't yeah. think he's a guy, you know, anybody has any illusions about him being an all ACC player, but, you know, he's an aggressive player. I think he runs the court well. You know, someone pointed out on Press Row the difference between him and, and Tunji is that, you know, he can catch the ball. He's got better hands than Tunji, and, uh, you know, he can pass the ball on the interior. So, yes. I, you know, I don't. I don't think he's going to be a great scorer, but I think he, I don't think he's uncomfortable with the ball in his hands the way some guys who aren't good scorers inside are. So I think he'll contribute. And you know, Mikulowskis is better than he showed last night. So right. yeah. I mean, none of those big men other than Kane is, is somebody who's really going to scare another team. But they got a lot of fouls among them, and you know, they can go out there and kind of play hard and not worry about fouling out, which they had to. Last year, that was an issue, you know. Right. There wasn't any depth behind him. I don't think that'll that'll be the case this year. So I think they'll be effective. Yeah. Uh, I think the hunt continues, you know, for the big man who can score mm-hmm. and can really do a lot. And obviously, they had some recruits in who could solve that problem if they uh, get him. Yeah. Jeff, thanks as always. I'll see you this weekend for all the games. Uh, we, it, it is it is still football season.
right? I, I, I don't know. I'll check on that. I'll get All back right, to you. I'll, I'll see you Saturday. I'll, I'll, I'll be at the stadium Saturday. You are going to make it there. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward but, to it. Ma- maybe I'll see you at the press conference that, tomorrow, but the jury's still out on that. special for this week. Take care. <laughs> Jeff's going to the football game. That's your upset special. Thanks, Jeff. See ya. That's Jeff White on the Casella's hotline on the Richmond, uh, from the Richmond Times. You know, Richmond Times just about. You know, you and I talked about this <laughs> before the show. Dave Leto and Virginia Basketball have bought us a lot of shows the rest of the fall. No <laughs> offense to football. We're going to do some football topics the rest of the week. But what happened last night, if this continues, Dave Leto, you, you're already a good friend of the show. You just became a best fop of the best seat in the house with what you bought us in terms of excitement, enthusiasm, and content the next three or four weeks heading into real ACC play. It's going to take us for a little while, I think. Thank you, Dave Leto. Look forward to seeing you in your it. office tomorrow morning. We've got an interview with Coach Leto tomorrow night and Curtis Staples as well. We'll take some of your phone calls right to 7 o'clock at 977-1070. Lasting images of the building. <laughs> Is it officially basketball season for real and football's, I guess, falling by the wayside? Or can you balance them both for a couple of weeks? And, uh... Is this now officially a basketball town or moving in that direction after last night? Let us know. We're coming right back.